Well, hello guys. How are you doing today? Hopefully you are doing well. Uh, we're going to take some time. We'll be interpreting some dreams today as people are hopping on. I'm just going to make a couple comments and give you an opportunity. If you'd like, go ahead and put in where you're coming from in our comments. Uh, we'll we'll kind of see what, what different areas, what different countries people are watching and viewing this from. So, well, first comment, if you are on Facebook, I just want to let you know that someone has made a fake account using uh, one of my pictures from my profile page and has been sending friend requests to people that like Streams Ministries, that like my personal page. And then after they join the friend request, to start asking for money. So we've had a number of people that have uh, reported this as being fake. And actually, I've, I've gotten a number of emails from Facebook saying that somebody reported it as fake. And then they reviewed the account and they found that it did not violate their community guidelines. I'm hoping as people continue to say that it's fake, that they will realize that it really is a violation because they say that uh, authenticity is key which means that somebody pretending to be somebody else and stealing people's money uh, for something that is untrue should be a violation of those guidelines. So hopefully they'll do something about that. But if you get a, a friend request uh, from me, realize that's not me. I don't send out friend requests on Facebook. Uh, actually, I rarely use Facebook. We post things on it, but I don't personally get on Facebook very often at all. Maybe once a a month or every other month, I'll actually take a look and see if there's anything that I need to uh, notice or respond to. But other than that, I, I rarely get on. And uh, we will never ask for money on Facebook, asking anybody to send us money directly. If we ever ask for money, it will always be inviting people to go back to streamsministries.com or onto our streams app and make donations there. We would never do it in a, in a private way and it would never be for personal use. So just getting that out of the way, wanted to make sure that you guys knew about it. Uh, looks like we've got a number of people that are joining in. So let's see, we've got, um, got a question on school dreams. Uh, school dreams, quickly, I mean, one of the things school dream could mean is it's it's about learning something. So depending on the context, what's happening, generally, if you're going to school in a dream, it means there's something that you need to learn. So let's see, we've got Illinois that's here. We've got, um, let's see, we've got Maryland. That's welcome. Okay, we've got somebody asking, what does long orange curly hair mean? What does long orange curly hair? So hair a lot of times can talk about wisdom or anointing. Uh, the, the wisdom piece we get from a, a couple references in Proverbs, the anointing we get from the story of Samson. Uh, and so it could mean that in orange often will mean perseverance, something that is, is stubborn or persevering. And so long, long orange hair could talk about some type of, of wisdom that is allowing someone to persevere even in the midst of difficult search, circumstances. So um, let's see, where do we got here? Rohan. Rohan said, um, one sister saw that she was wearing a top and five or six different color. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to catch all of the abbreviations. We'll see. Five, four, five or six different color. I'm not thinking that sinks. That must be snakes, maybe were hanging, hanging from their neck, uh, clutching her top in their mouths. She asked familiar but unrecognized people to remove them, um, but no one's removing them. So uh, basically, you've got somebody that's dealing with some deception, uh, specifically related to their gifting, and they're looking for help in dealing with that deception. Uh, as far as I can tell, I think I understood most of that dream. Let's see. LM, you've got a dream on here. It says, in an old house, in a pool room, kid was listening to Jesus teach about a man. 
Thunderstorm came with sun still visible. Jesus raised his hands and made it stop. Kid amazed. A dove flew over the pool. She woke up. So I'm assuming this is the kid is having the dream. So if that's the case, I mean, it's basically uh, this is someone that's learning from Jesus. Difficult circumstances come, but Jesus is going to come through and remove or change those difficult circumstances and give them an understanding about the moving of the Holy Spirit, the, the dove flying over the pool, the moving of the Holy Spirit. So that is a fun little dream. Let's see, Esther. Esther, good to have you on again. Um, I know you get on quite a bit when we do these. Let's see, it says, I'm taking care of a baby that's been given to me. I'm in a bus with him and calling him Avery. All right, so a baby is something that's been birthed, something that's new, that needs to be taken care of, needs to be stewarded. And this is not something that you necessarily developed yourself, but it was given to you. So uh, the baby was given to you. If it didn't come out of your own womb, so it didn't come out of your life. You didn't develop it, but somebody else developed it, but you gave it. Uh, a lot of times, like somebody starts a ministry and then they uh, turn it over to somebody else or they ask somebody for help or they start doing something, not necessarily like a, a ministry as in the structure, but doing something to minister to others. Uh, and then um, and then turns it over to somebody else. And that that would be the the thing. A, a bus is saying that the context of this is within a community. There, there's some type of a church community. This is the bus probably represents a church community, maybe a city church, a local church uh, that you're part of. And this ministry is going to be part of that. Um, I, I, I'm not going to take the time right now just to look up what the meaning of Avery is, but I would be curious. Just take a look. You, you can do a real quick Google search and say Avery name meaning. It's the only time I ever suggest Google search for dream interpretation uh, but because there's so many references that give you what the inherent meaning of the word uh, is. And that's what you're looking for, for, for name meanings. Look at what the inherent meaning of the name is for Avery. And that might give you a clue as to the type of gift or type of ministry that that this is that you are going to be helping with. Okay, Serena. So Serena, you wrote, I had a dream where I was given a gift. It was an Apple watch. One was for me and the other for my son. When I turned on the watch, it was automatically synced to my phone. And then I woke up. Okay, so automatically given a gift, but why an Apple watch? So, uh, you know, a lot of times phones can represent connection. Um, it's how we connect. It's how we get information about things. It's how we talk to other people. So it could be talking about prayer. A prayer life uh, is one of the things that a phone would, would represent. But a watch, um, oh, well, here's an obvious one I've never thought of. But because uh, I've not really run into an Apple Watch as a dream element before. So I'm just thinking about like, well, what could the possibilities be? And, you know, is it something about Apple? And eh, it doesn't feel right, but something about watch, especially if the phone represents prayer. A, a watch, it could be a play on words. Uh, how many times does Jesus say, watch and pray, watch and pray? And so there's a connection between our prayer life and our attention to what's happening spiritually, our watching what's going on spiritually. And that's what you're being given. You're, you're being given a gift. It's not just for you. Your son is also being given this invitation to connect up, to, to not only be in that place of prayer, which you've already developed, but for the seer gifting to be opened up so that you can begin to watch, pay attention to what's going on in the spiritual realm. And that's going to just automatically sync up with your prayer life. You're going to find yourself noticing things, seeing things, sensing things, and then praying about them. So that is a great dream. What an encouragement. Let's see. Riches and glory. You, you wrote this. I have a dream. I'm very pregnant. Two women are nearby. I asked them to send for a doctor. Then no doctor came. I gave birth to a healthy baby girl on my own with light support from the two women. Um, I was, and I don't have the rest of it. So let, let's go with that piece. So the, you know, the idea we talked about a baby earlier, 
can represent something that you're developing, something you're birthing. There's something that God has been developing within you and it's time for it to come forth. You're, you're thinking that you need others to help you with this process. You need somebody that's a professional to be able to help you to bring this thing out, but you're not going to get the help in that arena because you actually don't need it. That the people that God has put around you are going to be able to give you the support that they need, but you're going to birth this thing and it's going to be healthy when it comes out. So that is, um, yeah, that is, that is really good. Let's see, Alexandra. Alexandra, you wrote this. My friend asked me to give him socks, but when I give him, he said, it's not from Vinga, which is the name of a village from my country. He didn't want it. So, so socks, why socks? Socks could talk about comfort. You know, putting on socks with your shoes, it's a little bit more comfortable. So socks could could represent just being, uh, you know, some help to be more comfortable in the calling that God has. Um, actually, I'm going to leave it there. It just that feels like that's that's what this dream is talking about. And you, you're recognizing that your friend wants to be a little bit more comfortable in their calling, but that they're they're not willing to accept help that they're not familiar with. And so this is, you know, it's a name of a village from, from your country. Uh, it, it's something that's particular. He knew he's familiar with, he's looking for a particular kind of help to be more comfortable in his calling. And if it's not that kind of help, it's not what he's looking for. So that is interesting. I, I know that there's something, there, there's more to it than that. I know that that's the kind of the basic understanding of that dream. And I know that there's something more to it. Give me just a second. Let, let me think on that for, for just a second. Because there, there's something to that. Yeah, I'm curious if Vinga has a particular meaning in the, the language of your country. Uh, I, I would take a look at if, if there's a particular meaning to that name that might be in, that might be part of it. Yeah, and why? And one of the questions that we always ask in dream interpretation: Why did this dreamer have this dream? So why did you have this dream? Because it's not really about you. I mean, there's a little piece like you're 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 giving your friend socks, but it's really about your friend. Your friend is wanting socks. Your friend gets socks that he doesn't want because it doesn't come from a particular place. And and part of that is is intercession that God gave you this dream so that you would pray for your friend. Because there's there's a part of his calling that he's not quite comfortable in walking out and he's looking for something to help him be more comfortable. And what he's been given isn't what he's looking for. And the question that I, I'm, I'm left with and the dream does not answer this. So God may be able to give you a direct answer or maybe, you know, just from your relationship. Is that a good thing or is it a bad thing? Is he supposed to just receive the help that he's getting, or is that actually discernment? And he realizes, no, there's something specific that I need. And this isn't that. Um, so the meaning of the name Vinga may help you a little bit in understanding that, but those are the questions that I'm left with. Either way, it's definitely a, a dream that's calling you to pray for your friend, that they'd be comfortable in what God has given them to do. Okay. Queen Esther's courts. Let's see. So this is part two. Do you know what? Part one got lost in the comments. The way I'm looking at this, uh, it would take me too long to find part one. So I, I, I'm not going to jump in in the middle of a dream. That would be, uh, it's just too confusing. It, it, a lot of times different parts of the dream are going to have things that help to interpret the whole dream. So I will try to pay better attention. So I don't pull one up that actually has the the, the part two on it as we go forward. Let's look at this next one, Sister Chick. So in my dream, I see a bunch of men running around on their hands. They are arms and heads only. Uh, picture as if they were cut straight across at the armpit. Um, so I, I believe that this is an intercessory dream. Just the heads, just the arms. It's the mind of man and the strength of man. 
and you're noticing that there are a lot of people that are operating in their own way of thinking and in their own strength, and it looks unnatural because it is unnatural. It, you're seeing this so that you can pray. Pray that people would use everything that God has given them. They would not rely on their own strength. They would not rely on their own thoughts, but they would actually rely on the Lord because there's something for them to accomplish, but they're not going to be able to do it in their own strength and in their own um, in their own thought process. Okay, Vershua, you said I was dancing with my friend on the high street. They wanted to go into hobby craft. I found a children's book with pics of me inside. The cashier said sometimes the publisher does this. The book costs 14 pounds. Okay, so, you know, the, the high street, I mean, like this is the center of the, the city. It's the center of the community. And so th this is this is activity that you're doing that's right in the center of everything that's going on. You're not the only one, your friend. So this is something you and your friend uh, are, are doing. But this is really specifically about you because only the dancing is with your friend. The rest of it is just you that's going on. So you, you go into this place and you find a children's book with pics of you inside. Yeah, so dancing is just moving with the spirit. It's just following the flow. It's a it's a movement of intimacy where where you're 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 with someone else generally. I mean, I know that there's individual dancing, um, but there, there's this movement and this flow and letting the music, letting letting something else determine the rhythm of your life. And so dancing often talks about this ability just to flow with what God is doing, to flow with the rhythms of life that God has given you. Uh, but, but what this is doing is it's taking you into this place where you start to, to remember things that were sown into you from childhood. Uh, it, in, in the book of Matthew, Jesus said that unless you're converted and become like a little child, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And, and so th there's, there's, there's this childlikeness that's reminding you of you. Now, you're thinking it's interesting, like, wait a second, there's pictures of me in this. And then the cashier is like, well, you know, sometimes a publisher does this because there's specific things. It's not just child likeness in general that God's trying to draw your attention to, but something specific from your childhood that God is drawing your attention to. And, and he's calling you into this. Now, why 14? And 14, um, you know, one of the things that 14 can represent is it's two sevens. You have 14 generations, three different times in the book of Matthew and the genealogy of Jesus. And, and the, the reason for that is because it's sevens. So there's two sevens, two sevens, two sevens. And so this is talking about two sevens. Seven is something that's complete, full circle. Two is emphasis. It's just saying, yeah, this is really, a, it's, it's developing, it's multiplying something that's there. And, and so you, you've, you've gone full circle in some things in your life. And God is bringing you back to stuff that he sowed into you in your childhood. Because you're learning how to flow with his spirit, you're starting to see and recognize this. So that is actually a very encouraging dream. I hope that's encouraging to you. Very cool. Okay, let's see. Nephra. Nephra, I was in a spotlight and watched as dry leaves were gathered in a shallow oval basket over my head. Then they burned. When the fire was finished, there was no soot, smoke, or signs of the fire or the leaves. Okay, so you're in a spotlight. That means you're being highlighted. This is something about your life, something that's happening in your life. Now, why dry leaves? That, that's kind of important. Now, one of the things is the fact that it's over your head. So it has something to do with thoughts, something to have to do with your mindset, your thought process that this is related to. But leaves are, are things that grow on trees, right? They grow on plants. And so it's something that's cultivated. And, you know, in one place in scripture, in the book of Revelation, it says that the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nations. Um, that doesn't seem to fit this particular dream. So you don't want to make too much of the healing aspect of it, but it's more things that have been developed on plants. Now, 
plants, trees can often represent leadership. So it's things that have been sown into you in another season, but they don't have life on them. Things that other people have developed, other people have thought that have affected your life, you're realizing how they don't have life on them. And God is actually removing them. He's consuming them. There's not even going to be a trace of them being on. So there's things that you've received from others in, in different season of your life that you're starting to recognize does not have life on them. And God is highlighting this and showing you that he's removing it. And once it's gone, there's not even going to be a trace of it left. That is really fun. That's an encouraging dream as well. Let's see, Melissa Sanders. So it looks like you had this dream on July 17th in 2017. So I was in a class setting and I was asked if we wanted to determine our DNA, our ancestry background. Everyone acted like they were not concerned. I told the instructor, I want to know, and I was curious. Okay, so DNA, ancestry, background. This is talking about your spiritual inheritance, those things that have sown into you. And, and actually, there's twofold, because as soon as I said that, I just felt this check of the Holy Spirit, that there's more to it than that. So I'm going to start there, but I'm going to give you the other piece to it. Um, so so there, there's some things in the spiritual inheritance. That spiritual inheritance uh, is not separated from your your actual your your uh, real ancestors. So it's things that God sowed into your bloodline and things that God did in your bloodline. And that was the check because it, it couldn't be just about a spiritual inheritance that maybe you got from your church or people that sown into you, uh, people that have mentored you. This is specifically about your bloodline. There's a natural aspect to it, but it is what God has done, who they were, what their story is, that there's something that you're being called to, to be able to explore and be able to find out because there's things from your ancestry, from your, your bloodline that are, are key for, for where you're going and that hunger that's inside of you to understand it. You're being given the opportunity to learn. Class setting, learn. This is, this is, you're being given an opportunity to learn about these things. So as you get those opportunities, or actually I would encourage you to look for the opportunities to learn, to, to ask stories of those in your family, especially the, the oldest generation that's alive, have them tell you stories about your family, about your ancestors, about how things were, um, what God did, if, if there's any of those stories, like, you know, was anybody really into prayer? Was, you know, was anybody known for being religious? Was, you know, sometimes we, we don't know those things in the natural, but when we hear the stories, we find out, oh yeah, grandpa, like, I mean, he, he was as crazy about God as you are, or something like along those lines when, when we seem to have a, a new, um, when we seem to be the only one that really has a, a level of faith in our family, sometimes finding out that we're not the only ones, that there are others that have sown into it in previous generations can be really helpful. So anyways, the, the main point is learn what you can about your family because there's a spiritual inheritance that God is highlighting for you. Okay, Charles Owens. Charles, so you wrote this. I'm on a mountain with fresh snow. People were sledding. Two tree trunks leaning towards a deep chasm and pointing to a partial clearing on the other side. A voice said $2,000, including lift tech tickets and four sled jump. Including lift tickets for sled jump. Okay, so you're on this mountain. You're seeing people sledding around. You're recognizing these two different trees that are leaning towards this deep chasm, but there's a clearing on the other side. And you hear somebody say it's going to cost $2,000 to get lift tech tickets so you can go on the sled and jump over to the other side. Um, why $2,000? And that, that's the question that I'm trying to, to figure out is 2000. Is there something specific about the 2000? Is it just a large amount? Is there something about multiplication Two sometimes can talk about multiplication can talk about deliverance. Um, 
actually I'm going to pull up, pull up my phone because I have a Bible app on my phone. That's easy for me to find. And I, I'm just going to look at something really quick. I'm just curious if this makes sense for this dream. Uh, sometimes when we see these things, there, there's a, a Bible passage that they, re, that they relate to. Not all the time, but sometimes. And I, I just wonder, because I, I kept on thinking about Psalm chapter 20, and I just, um, just scanned it really quick. I think there's something about Psalm 20. I don't think it's the only meaning of this. But I, f I actually feel like there's something about Psalm 20 for you, a promise from God for you. Not sure how it relates to this dream, but I was thinking about it. I looked at it and I actually do feel like there's something specific for you, Charles, on that Psalms 20 thing. So I, I would encourage you to go read through Psalms 20 and pray it and see what the Lord uh, brings up and, and inspires in your heart. Because I think there's something there for you. But let's let's come back to this dream. So. The, the mountain, sometimes a mountain is a place of meeting with the Lord. Sometimes it's difficulty. Now, there's no difficulty because you're not climbing a mountain. So it's not an obstacle that you need to overcome. This is this is about uh, sledding, which is not a lot of effort, right? It's fun. It's it's exciting. So that that's what's going on. You, you've seen other people that are just sliding on the grace that God has given. Sometimes snow, it can represent um, can represent mercy, can represent grace, white as snow, but I will make it white as snow. So it's talking about God's grace, overcoming sin, overcoming shame, and just the, the, the kindness of God being released. And so that's what this is talking about. People that are just, just sledding, sliding on God's grace, that God's released something beautiful and, and people are just going with it. And you're recognizing two different leaders that have sown into your life that are pointing to this wide open space. The, in one place, David says that you, you brought me into this wide open space. And it's talking about the blessing of God that like there's room, like there's all these opportunities, all these possibilities that are available. And you're seeing this wide open space and, and you're realizing that there's, there's a way to get there. But you're hearing the Lord saying that there's a price to pay. Uh, you're not earning anything. You're not buying anything. But sometimes there's a price for us to step into what God has for us. And why the 2000? I'm still not sure why the 2000. I, there's something about Psalms 20, but it didn't seem to talk necessarily about a price. Maybe it's about the faith. Uh, maybe what, what we give is, you know, the, there's a phrase that's become popular in charismatic Christianity. I think it was coined in the 70s with one of the one of the um, charismatic leaders of that period of time. It says that faith is the currency of heaven. Right. And so there, there's this kind of this thought process. So maybe it's believing something, the promises of God over you. Uh, there, there might be something like that. I, I would continue to ask the Lord, what is this $2,000? Why 2000? But there's definitely an invitation that, that you've seen people that are just enjoying God's grace, enjoying God's mercy. And, and you've been given an invitation to, to enjoy that mercy and, and what leaders have revealed, have shown you what's possible. There's two things leaning over this chasm. It's going to take a risk. You're going to have to jump. It's going to take faith to be able to get there. But when you get there, it's this wide open space. It's this uh, this clearing, this partial clearing that's on the other side. So hopefully that's encouraging for you. Uh, I, I, you know, again, I know there's a little bit of pieces, but that, that's one of the beautiful things about dream interpretation is when, when we're interpreting dreams for others or we're getting dreams interpreted, a lot of times God doesn't give every little piece of it. The dream itself doesn't always say every little piece. And what God gives to the dream interpreter is not always about every little piece. Often it's just clues that help us know how we can engage God because the reason God gives dreams most often is because he wants us to have to pursue him to get the answer. He could just make it clear, make it plain. 
but he does this on purpose so that we have to pursue him. We have to search it out to be able to find the answer because he's more interested in the relationship that gets developed in our searching than he is in us having the answer to the questions that we're looking for. So when we when we get these dreams and, and even when there's things that are interpreted, it's always to draw us back so that we can continue to go after God and continue to learn some more. So, hey, I want to make sure that you guys realize, I know some of you have heard us talk about this. One of the things that we do here at Streams is we equip people to hear God better. And we do this in a variety of ways. And, and, and our most productive way of doing that right now is our Streams Academy. We, we've taken things that we've learned from decades of doing seminars, teaching on the prophetic, what John Paul learned, uh, what I've learned, and brought it all together. And we, we've, we've developed this format that takes things about the prophetic and the spiritual life and goes a lot deeper. And right now we, we have our year one Streams Academy that's going on. It's separated into six modules and you can jump in at any point. We're getting ready to start module three here in just a few days. It's starting in May 1st. So you, you've only got about a week left to be able to register for the, the module three, which is all about prophetic ministry. We're going to go a lot deeper in prophetic ministry, not just the gift of prophecy, but the ministry of the prophetic and the office of the prophet. And we're going to start looking at that and looking at some of the dynamics that are related to it. You're going to find it really helpful. When you sign up for Streams Academy, you get the videos, you get videos of me teaching through the material. Then you get videos from when we were in the live class, the Q&A that we've had. And then every two weeks, we get together on Zoom with one of our streams teachers. And I always do at least one of those for every season, for every module of the Streams Academy, where you can ask questions, you can interact with a teacher, you can get some personal mentoring related to the stuff that you're learning. And, and people are finding it really, really helpful. I'd love for you guys to join in on this one. Just go to streamstraining.com, streamstraining.com. You'll be able to, to look up that. You can register for, for module three and, and join us. And, and maybe you'll want to continue on. We're in the process right now of developing our second year material. And we're going to be telling you a lot more about it. But our second year is going to be called Going Deeper in Spiritual Realities. We're going, to, we're going to talk about spiritual warfare. We're going to talk about spiritual authority, wisdom points related to walking in the spirit. We're, we're going to go a lot deeper into prayer. It, it's, it's, going to, it, it's going to be a really rich time. There's some wonderful things that, that we've been developing that God's been revealing to us. And I can't wait to share it with you guys and see what God does as we begin to raise up this, what, what John Paul called the Delta force in the spirit. Uh, people that are highly trained and ready for whatever environment they end up in and are able to accomplish kingdom missions uh, to push back the darkness and see God's kingdom released on the earth. That's what we're here to do. We want to help you do that. So Streams Academy, go to streamstraining.com or you can go to streamsministries.com. Either one, look forward to doing that. Let me get one more dream and then we're going to wrap up for today and we will be back next week. Okay, so let's see this. Well, this was a good timing. I just happened to, to see this one pop up and I see my name on it. So we'll see what this dream is about. Juala, you said, John, one dream, my teeth falling out, and you saw me and my friend Josh Offert, Josh Offert uh, with Wind Ministries in Canada. He's one of our streams teachers. Actually, by the way, Josh just released a new book called Transformation. He just sent me a picture of it uh, last night, it, and it is really good. He let me read it early. Uh, I got to re, uh, write an acknowledgement uh, for it. It is such a good book. Highly encourage you. Check that out. Josh Hoffer, Transformation. Anyways, so you saw me and Josh Hoffer, and you both have new teeth from a doctor that look clean, and you're showing me that I need to get similar. So teeth often talk about the ability to understand or to comprehend something. 
And so there's something about what God has given streams, me and Josh, in a related to understanding, spiritual understanding that God is highlighting to you and telling you that that is important. So I, I would I would look. I mean, the, the book that Josh put out, that's one of the one of the places that you'll be able to find those new teeth. Um, but also the the teachings that, that are available. I mean, we've got a lot of stuff right here on our YouTube channel. Um, I know you're watching on Facebook, but you can go to our YouTube channel, uh, Streams Ministries, and, and research that. Go to our app. We've got a lot of free resources on that. We've got blogs. We've got podcasts that are available. And when you're ready to go deeper, take a look at, at Streams Academy. is a great opportunity, but maybe you don't want to do the Streams Academy. You want to do a little bit more at your own pace. We have subscriptions for all the courses that John Paul wrote and that I wrote that you could be a part of it. So there's lots of ways that you can learn those new understandings uh, that, that will go with what it is that God is talking to you about. So very cool. Guys, thank you so much, guys and gals. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us uh, and look forward to next week. Next week, we'll be doing more of a teaching rather than a dream interpretation. But we'll see you next week and make sure if you haven't already that when you go to our YouTube channel that you click that subscribe button and the little bell so that you get notifications so that you know whenever we go live and we're doing these and whenever we're doing dream interpretation, you'll be able to see it right on there. We try to make sure it's it's right on the title to make it easy for you to know and you'll be able to put up more dreams. Until then, keep dreaming. Bless you guys. Have an astounding day.